Good morning, everyone. Man, y'all don't sound like it's a happy Sabbath, so I'm going to say that again. Good morning, everyone. It is indeed an honor and privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. The older you get, the more you appreciate the Sabbath. You don't have to think about your bills, work, or anything else. All you need to do is focus on the fact that we serve a good God. I want to welcome you to our dedication convocation service. And it's really nice for us to be able to have our service without no restrictions. God has been good. He's brought us, I wouldn't say out of COVID, but we are on the tail end of COVID. And for that, we are very grateful. Today, um, we get to dedicate our school year to God. And I believe that, that this is a good start for us. Because whatever we do, we want to make sure that God is a part of the experience. And so as we get ready for our worship service, as we prepare our hearts, we're going to invite our praise team to come forward and bless our hearts. And then we will follow the program as outlined. Your voice ever close, you called me, you never gave up pursuing. I fell in love, you stole my heart. Your hand ever near, I hold you. I long for your heart to know you, just to live in your fellowship, just to be close to you. Just to walk next to you, this is my one thing, you are my one thing. Just to be close to you, just to walk next to you, this is my one thing, you are my one thing. My eyes ever fixed upon you, to live like a child to trust you. I'll hold on to this treasured love. My life ever sat at your feet. I give you my heart completely to live this life always by your side. Just to be close to you, just to walk next to you. This is my one thing. You are my one thing, just to be close to you, just to walk next to you. This is my one thing, you are my one thing. I have to know you within me cries out for your presence God nothing compares there's no one else Jesus you're my one desire I have to know you all that's within me cries out for your presence God Nothing compares, there's no one else, Jesus, you're my one desire, Jesus, you're my one desire, just to be close to you, just to walk next to you, this is my one thing. You are my one thing, just to be close to you, just to walk next to you. This is my one thing, you are my one thing.
You saw me first You let me in when I was at my worst The moment when I heard you say my name Was the first time in so long I'm not afraid I'm not afraid you are the voice that calms the storm inside me cast the walls that stand around me all this time my guardian was you you are the light that shines in every tunnel there in the past you'll be there tomorrow all my life your love was breaking through it's always been you It's always been you My northern star Your love will be the compass of my heart Oh, I just wanna be right where you are Right where you are You are the voice that calms the storm inside me Cast the walls that stand around me All this time my guardian was you You are the light that shines in every tunnel There in the past, you'll be there tomorrow All my life your love was breaking through It's always been you It's always been you. It's always been you. It's always been you. You may stand for our next song. It was moon cross you bore, so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name. And now my shame is gone. I stand amazed in your love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name. exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place 
you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. You may be seated. Dear God, I've been trying awful hard to make you proud of me, but it seems the harder that I try, all the harder it becomes, and I feel like giving up. Most of the time and Dear God I've been chasing their approval And it's killing me And I know The more I try to prove All the less I have to show and I'm stuck inside my head most of the time. But if I pray a little harder, if I follow all the rules, I wonder could I ever be enough? Cause I try and I try just to fall back down again. And I ask myself, why do I try to chase the wind? I should lean into the mystery. Maybe hope is found in a melody. I want to try again. Oh, I'm going to try again. And dear child, I hope you know how much I love you and I'm proud of you. And please believe the thoughts I have for you will never change or fade away. And when you felt like giving up, I never did. Cause I'm not scared of imperfections Or the questions in your head Just know that you have always been enough Cause I tried and you tried And I saw you wrestle with Every how, every why I was right there listening So just fall into the mystery And I'll meet you here in the melody Try, just try again. Oh, child, would you try again? My child, you can love again.
Good morning. I have been asked to have you guys scoot in toward the middle if you can, just to make room for some that are still outside um, looking for seats. But um, my name is Erica Hippler. I am PPI um, leader this year. And once again, we have a calendar full of activities for the kids and we are incredibly thankful and should be super excited about it. Um, PPI stands for Parents Positively, Positively Involved. And um, one of the ways that we kind of support these events throughout the year is by prepping and serving food for the events. And I am happy to have you come and help and uh, be part of that team. So if you are someone who is looking to get involved, I encourage you to, I think they put my information right behind me here. You can either screenshot or write down and just kind of send a message to me. Let me know that you're willing to be a part this year and I will continue to keep you in touch. So um, we look forward to a great year. Happy Sabbath. One of the things that's really important in a Christian school is spiritual growth. And I believe that above academics, above athletic abilities, the reason why our children are in this institution is because we're trying to steer them towards the kingdom. And so we have initiated, I call it the principles initiative, what I call Parents Spiritually Impacting Angels Academy. And the two individuals that are standing next to me, they're from the Philippines. And uh, I'm going to try to pronounce the name, Trieco. Oh, was that good? Okay, good, good, good. Family. And I'm just going to ask them some questions. They're now enrolled in seminary. And I wanted to ask some questions because I met them when they came to enroll their, their, their child here at the academy. And... Uh, you guys have been involved in your country in um, youth ministries. Can you just give us kind of a brief synopsis of what that looked like for you? Okay, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. So my name is Jean. I'm a teacher by profession and a psychologist. In the Philippines, I am very blessed that my, I've been my husband partner in ministry as an ordained pastor for 15 years. And one of my great greatest passion and the Lord inspired me is to work with the young people. We are working not only in the church, but in the community. We are part, our government has program like um, youth development session and that is giving a moral recovery program for the youth. And we become part and a regular um, resource person of the program. And of course, one of our greatest mission in our district is to utilize our young people in doing the ministry. God expects them. And so we are really passionate in leading these young people, not only to serve here, here on earth, but to prepare them for eternity. Yeah. Uh, by the way, my name is Reagan Trajeco, and uh, I am working as a pastor in my uh, country in the Philippines, almost 15 years. And one of our program in the district is to lead young people, not only for the Adventist young people, but also the non-Adventist young people. And we are so happy to become of, uh, uh, become of the part of the uh, community program. And so I, I have invited them to co-chair the um, Parents Spiritually Impacting Angels Academy Committee. If anyone would like to be a part of that, just to tell you what it's about. It's about praying of our students. It's about uh, providing Bible studies. It's about mentoring them, mentoring our young men and our young women. into. Uh, we want them to have a, a, a view 
to see what it means to be a Christian man and a Christian woman. And so if you would like to be a part of that, please reach out to me and um, we can get you um, connected and we will be able to begin to continue to raise the spiritual level of our school. So thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to, to working together and having you guys partner with us also. Thank you. So every year we, we select a, a theme for our school. And um, we usually uh, use our leadership and evangelism class. And we get uh, a lot of different selections. And then post week, the faculty and staff would look at the, the different um, submissions. And then we, we would modify, we need to modify and vote. And this year we have um, selected the theme that's on the screen and also will be revealed on our banner is live his light, live his light. And the passage is John 1 verse 7. I'm not going to read it because it's going to be read later on. First John 1 verse 7. But in a dark world, and the world is a very dark place. And I don't know if you have ever experienced like real darkness. I come from the island of Jamaica. And I know what it's like to be walking at night when it's really dark and you can't really see. You actually have to memorize your path. <laughs> so you're walking by, by faith and not necessarily by sight. But the crazy thing is that even if someone has just a small light, Sometimes it's even a light bug. When the light bug comes across, you're able to see light. And in this world, there's so, many, so much darkness that's taking place. We look at the news and we don't say anything to be joyful or to be joyous about. At this academy, we want to be the light in our community. We want to be the light that will be able to, to shine in dark places, that will be able to point people to Jesus. And so this year we have selected this theme, to live his light. That means that we're going to be involved in more community service. It means that we're going to be more intentional about conducting ourselves in a, in a, in a proper way, in a Christ-like manner. Because everything that we do has to do with worship. Our behaviors, what we say, has to do with worship. And we want to represent Christ in a really meaningful way. And so we have selected the theme this year, Live His Light. Can we get a drum roll so we could re re review our banners? morning and happy Sabbath. This is our call to worship. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Well, good morning. I'm going to invite you to stand up and to pick up a hymnal from the pew there. We're going to uh, sing hymn 330, Take My Life and Let It Be. 330, and the hymnals are right in front of your, uh, the front pew, or maybe underneath for those of you in the front. Let's stand up. Thank you.
Happy Sabbath, church. Uh, we are now going to offer the prayer of um, intercession. So I'm going to invite you to please stand as we pray. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh, Lord. Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. In this beautiful Sabbath morning, Father God, we want to give you praise and glory because you are our creator, our counselor, our savior, our redeemer, our protector, and our guide. We want to take time to lift up our young people before your throne and ask you to share, to share a special blessing on each one of them at the beginning of this academic year. We want to offer our young people as a living sacrifice that you put your hands upon them you give them a special anointing that your Holy Spirit may dwell upon them day in and day out. They can not only learn academically, but they can also grow emotionally and especially spiritually. I want also, Father God, to request a special blessing upon our teachers who will be leading them every day in the classroom that you give them good health physically, mentally, and spiritually, and your inspiration, so that they can mold them and prepare them to be productive uh, citizens in this world, and more importantly, in the world to come. I want to lift up the administration before your throne. There's our principal and his team, strengthen him, guide him, and use him in a powerful way to be a blessing, not only for this academy, but also for the entire community. Dear God, I want to pray for the school board, especially our board chair, all the board members, give them your wisdom as they deal every day with various issues. Bless our volunteers. We thank you for those who are donating their time or their means to support the academy. And I want God to pray for the entire Andrews University family. Bless the administration and all the entire community. Bless the churches that are supporting this institution and the entire, your children throughout the entire world as we worship you on this Sabbath day. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit and help us to be a light in this world. Dear God, we recognize that in spite of your goodness and your numerous blessings, so many times we have fallen short of your glory. Therefore, we ask that you forgive all our sins and give us to dedicate our lives to you to be 
like living sacrifices, and all of us can be instruments of peace, of reconciliation, of blessings to glorify your name. And now, Father God, bless your men servant who will um, share your word this morning. Give him your anointing and your Holy Spirit so that every word that he will say will come from you and will prepare our minds and our hearts to worship you and to serve you. We thank you, Father God, for all your blessing, for your love, and especially for the gift of Jesus in our lives. In his name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Welcome parents, students, family, and friends to the 2023 school year at Andrews Academy. On behalf of the school board, administration, faculty, and staff, we want to thank you for your commitment for, to uh, Andrews Academy, to Christian education, for your support, for your love and care, for your prayers. For each and every one of us, know that from the school maintenance to the school principal, we all are here to serve you because we want to, because we love you, because we love your children, because we believe in Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. And we do take our responsibilities very serious as well. And mine is no easy task. Um, every single one of you gets to talk to me. I, I'm the student accounts manager and business manager of Andrews Academy. And I know that as some of you get to know me uh, just, just in, a, in a small way because you don't have much to talk to me about except how much do I need to pay and I'm good to go. But some of you I get to know and get to know me on a much deeper level because there are circumstances that make your walk your journey in, in having Christian education possible for your children. And therefore, it is my privilege and honor to listen to you, to hear your journey, to walk with you, uh, to see you in a vulnerable position. And know that, I, that it does not stay there. Uh, it, we, I pray with you. Um, I pray for you. I we have a business, um, a financial board meeting every month. We do not discuss any names. We discuss only family uh, balances and how can we help you. And it is, um, it is my, uh, my job to help you make this possible for your children. And, so, and in this journey as student accounts manager, I have seen some of you solidly uh, strong financially, and you are like that all your journey. But some of you do take a dip. And then from being able to, to um, support Christian education, you're in a position where you need to receive assistance for Christian education. And therefore, at this moment, my appeal to those of you who are blessed, those of you who are financially stable, to share your blessing, to share that, you, that others may be able to also afford Christian education for their children. Sometimes we're gonna be at the top, sometimes we may be at the bottom, and that's okay. That's why we're here, to help each other. And if you are in the position where you are not able to help, some of you, you may be like, but you're making a call for offering and I'm the one receiving the help. And that's okay. You know, what the appeal I make to you is that you may know someone that may be able to help. And sometimes it's very difficult for us to ask for help for ourselves. You don't need to do that. But you may, what you may do is make that appeal to those that may be able to help 
for the Worthy Student Scholarship Program, and that is a fund that is anonymous or that to the to the receiver. It's uh, the donors may may make those donations to that scholarship program. It's not to a specific student. That will be decided as the needs arise. I do want to tell you that in 2022, when the pandemic started, every, there was a lot of uncertainty. It was back in March after spring break that our doors closed. Yet 2021 was a strong year still for enrollment and for people's uh, finances. 2022, I have seen now an increase in, in financial need. And, and it is not just loss of jobs, but some of you are going through loss of family members, loss of health, un unforeseen expenses from your homes, from your, your houses, or the children. There's a lot of need that sometimes we don't share and we don't know, and that's okay. And that's why we need this Worthy Student Funds to increase so that we can help each and every one of you when you're on top when you're at the bottom. Uh, Jesus was amazing when from 10 commandments in his walk here, he just really resumed it to one. He said, you know what, maybe 10 are too complicated for you. Let's, let's resume it in one. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. That's in John 13. And in Romans 12, I saw this, and it was so beautiful. It says, be devoted to one another in love, Honor one another about, above yourselves. For this message you heard from the beginning, we should love one another. And not for ourselves. It says to serve others. So this morning, my appeal to you is that if you're able to give some today, thank you. If not, help us find those that, that are in a position to give. Come talk to me. If you have some ideas on how we can build a worthy student fund, if you if you want to um, partner with us in building those funds, please contact me. I appreciate, and on behalf of all of Andrews Academy, uh, again, your sacrifice, your effort, and uh, again, communicate with me. And I ask now for our National Honor Society uh, members to come forward so that we can um, have offering this morning. And we'll pray before they start. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath that you have given us. We thank you for the opportunity to be here at Andrews Academy to dedicate a new school year, to dedicate these students, and to dedicate these parents this commitment to Christian education. As we um, have offering this morning, I ask you for a very special blessing. Some of our parents, some of our family and friends that are here gathered are going to give what may be their last coin in their budget for the month. Some have blessings to share. But what I ask is that just like you multiplied the fish and the loaves, that what is given today you may multiply in abundance. Our children, we're living desperate times, and our children need to be in Seventh Adventist Christian education. I ask you for a special blessing that we it is managed in and go into the funds that are needed for our students to be able to have a relationship with you and a wonderful school year. Be with us in the name of your son Jesus, we pray. Amen.
So today's scripture reading is 1 John 1, 7, and I'll be reading in English. Um, so, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. His son purifies us from all sin. Uh, I'm going to be reading 1 John 1, 7 in Spanish. Pero si andamos en luz como él está en luz, tenemos comunión unos con otros, y la sangre de Jesús Cristo, su Hijo, nos limpia de todo pecado. Our reading in Mandarin. 我们若在光明中行, 如同神在光明中, 祂儿子耶稣的血, 也洗, I'll be reading it in Portuguese. Mas se andamos na luz, como ele na luz está, temos comunhão uns com os outros, e o sangue de Jesus Cristo, seu Filho, nos purifica de todo o pecado. I'm going to read in Korean. 저가 빛 가운데 계신 것 같이 우리도 빛 가운데 행하면 우리가 서로 사귐이 있고 그 아들 예수의 피가 우리를 모든 죄에서 깨끗하게 하실 것이요. And I'm going to be reading in Romanian. Dar dacă umblăm în lumină, după cum Iisus este în lumină, avem partiții unii cu alții și sângele lui Iisus Hristos, Fiul lui, ne curăță de orice păcat.
Thank you so much, Mrs. Ms. Gallardo, for the beautiful interpretation. And good morning, Andrews Academy. Good morning. Or good afternoon now, I should say. It's uh, really good to be here with you this morning. And thank you, Pastor Ferguson, for the invitation. It's truly a delight to be here. And thank you for all of the program. I have been blessed to be with you this morning. So a uh, new school year has just started, and many students are asking in their minds, are we going to be able to do this? Are we going to be able to go through the year and be successful? And those freshmen are saying, it's going to be in the next four years. You know, some people do the math, and probably if you do the math and say, listen, if you add the homeworks and the tests and the quizzes and the pages I need to read, this is a lot. It's like a mountain, almost impossible to climb. But you know what? It's doable. And today I'm going to give you a few uh, keys on how you can do this, not only survive, but thrive during the academy by the grace of God. And this is not only for students, but all of us, parents and teachers and so forth. This is going to be uh, for all of us. Now, it was March 5, 1966. The plane was, uh, 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 the flight was 9-11. British Airways, taken off from uh, Tokyo. This plane was going to uh, first to Hong Kong and then to, to England. And then everything was perfect. As a matter of fact, the plane was in perfect mechanical condition. No problems whatsoever. But you know what? When you take off from there, soon you will see Mount Fuji. It's the tallest, greatest, most wonderful mountain in Japan. And the pilot had an idea. The idea was, what if, what if I just do a little detour and, and I get off the route of the plane so that I could show my passengers a better view of Mount Fuji? Great idea. What do you think? Getting out of the course without tower control permission. But he says, it's just a little bit. It's just a tiny bit. 
And then he did. That's exactly what he did. I'm going to show this passage. They're going to love me forever. As a matter of fact, they're going to love this uh, uh, flight. They're going to rem remember me forever. They're going to say, this is the greatest pilot ever. And he did that. He just took a little detour, and people started to see Mount Fuji just coming so close to them. And uh, they were ready to look. And then when they were going on top of Mount Fuji, what the pilot didn't know is that in that area, there's a lot of winds, and especially in that time of the year. And that day, there was lots of winds and uh, gusts, and the winds encircled the plane, and the pilot lost control. And the plane with 124 passengers plummeted, plummeted to the ground. All of them died. Just because one day the pilot wanted to uh, take a little detour. Just because one day the pilot says, you know what? Uh, I'm going to uh, allow to be distracted just a little bit. Because of that, 124 people lost their lives. And my question to us today is, what are your distractions? Are there any distractions that are preventing you and I from going the course? Could it be that we are taking little detours or big detours that are preventing us from going on our route? Oh, but it's just a little bit. Oh, but the detour is so small. Oh, but the detour is only one Time, it's just a little one, just a little detour, it's just a little distraction. Uh, I don't know what are your distractions. Perhaps the distraction for some are some friends that said, hey, forget about homework and let's just, just, just play some games. Or perhaps the distraction is, you know, forget about going to church, forget about going to God, let's just go and do this or that. I don't know what are you, perhaps somebody's addicted to something, or video games, or the internet, or social media. I don't know. You need to answer that question. What are your distractions? You know, uh, somebody said that the, that the enemy, the devil, if he cannot kill you, he will distract you. Let that sink in a little bit. The enemy wants to kill you. He cannot do that because the Lord will prevent from that. But you know what? You're the one who can prevent if you can be distracted from that goal or not. And sometimes he's very uh, good at distracting us. So point number one from the keys that I want to give you today for you to be successful, not only students, but parents, teachers, all of us, is be careful with distractions. Don't get distracted. Don't go on detours. Don't go on shortcuts. There's one verse that I love. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 35. And it says, I am saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with as few distractions as possible. Serve the Lord with all of your mind, but with as few distractions as possible. You know, all of us have distractions, but be careful. You know, uh, when I was uh, a youth uh, growing up in South America, my father took us on small mission trips in, in the jungle of South America. That's where I got the love for missions, and that's, where, that's why we go to, every year to Cuba and do missions there. Uh, but one day there in South America, deep jungle of South America, we had to take a bus and then walk for hours and hours. And then at one, mom, at one point, my dad, it seemed that he took a shortcut. He was distracted and took a shortcut. And the, and the day was finished, the, the, the sun was setting and his, he said at one moment, guys, I was going with my brother, guys, if we don't hurry up and really find the, 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 the place, we're going to get lost in the middle of the jungle. And this is, this is jungle. And then uh, the, the, the sun set and it was completely dark. And at one moment, you know, my dad stopped and he said, guys, I have a confession to make. And we kind of knew what was coming. And he said, guys, we are 
lost. And you would think that I was extremely nervous and, 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 and sad and so forth. And on one side, I was 10, 11 years old. One side, I was holding the hand of my dad. And on the other, I went like this. Yeah, I'm lost in the middle of the American jungle. Of the, I'm sorry, of the South American jungle. When I go back to my class on, to the school on Monday, I'm going to brag and I'm going to say, you know what? I was lost in the South American jungle and I survived. At that moment, I didn't know if I was going to survive. But I was, I, was, I, was not too, I was not too concerned. But I was not too concerned because I was with that. And thank goodness uh, uh, there was a solution to that. We were able to find the place. But just a little distraction, just a little detour from my father almost cost our life. So number one, be careful with distraction. Number two. Don't underestimate this generation. So this current generation, you're in high school, you're in college, a little bit more, a little bit less. You are Generation Z. Generation Z are those folk that uh, were born in, from 1995 to 2010. So if you are in that margin, can you please raise your hand? 1995, if you were born, 1995 to 2010, raise your hand. Oh, a great number. Great. If you're in high school, you are Generation Z. No way around it. And uh, so Generation Z is a generation that is talented. It's a generation that is their leaders. And somebody said that Generation Z is perhaps the most talented and will be the most educated generation ever. You know why? Because this generation is ambitious. You guys, you high schoolers, you're ambitious in a good way. You are smart. You think big. You don't settle for, for small things. And it has been said, this generation can make a difference for the good or for the worse or for the bad. And of course, we're calling on you to make the difference for the good. You're, we're calling on Generation Z to be able to do that, you know, New York Times bestseller, John Maxwell, once said, leadership is influence, leadership is influence, period. Nothing more, nothing less. And this generation is all about influence. Let me give you a, an example. Generation Z, which is you guys, high schoolers and college age, account for 2.8 billion with a B, of population on earth and there's eight billion people on earth so one out of every three persons on earth are generation z is the largest generation alive of course uh, uh baby boomers lots of them have passed and etc but this generation is the like 2.5 billion so think about it if generation z says listen we want to dress like this People pay attention because it's 2.5 billion people. If you want to listen to this type of music, people pay. But if you also say, I have decided to follow Jesus, no matter what, people also listen because they're listening to you. They may not listen to me as they listen to you. Generation Z, they will see. So your, your influence is huge. Your influence is huge for good or for bad. You know, there was one feller in the Bible, one feller in the Bible, that he was not, um, uh, he was underestimated. His family says, you know what, you're good for nothing, you're just a young people. He was a generation C, Z, if you please, at that time. He was a teenager, and his own brothers said, you know what, you're good for nothing, you should just go back to your sheep. And when he went to the king, Saul, Saul says, you're good for nothing. Come on. You cannot fight that. You cannot fight that uh, giant. And in 1 Samuel 17, 33 says, Paul talking to David, you're not, with emphasis or not, you're not able to go out against Goliath and fight him. You're not. You're not. You're only a young man. And Goliath has been a warrior from his youth. And that's what people try to tell today's generation. You're not. You're not able. You're too young. There's no way you can do it. And today I'm, we're telling you, yes, you can. 
Yes, you can do great things for the Lord. You can do great things in school. You can be a great student. You can set the example. You can raise the bar among youth. Yes, there's many youth there, many young adults that do not want to hear about God, but you do, and you can make the difference in them. Are you following me? So number two, don't underestimate your generation. Number three, don't give up. Oh, just too many people give up. Give up from high school, give up in life. You know, there's one verse that I want to bring to you. Second Chronicles 15, 7. Just pay attention. But as for you, be strong and do not give up. Did you hear that? Let me read again. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Now, this text is not only for the students. This text is for teachers. Teachers, do not give up. Sometimes, probably, you feel like giving up because it's tough. You know, when I was a high schooler, I thought that the teachers were against me. And they gave me so much work. And I said, these guys hate me. They hate me. They give me so much work. And I... Uh, Come on, they, they, they cannot like me. If they would like me, they would just hardly teach anything, take us out on a walk, and don't give us homework. And then afterwards, I learned that they did love me, and they wanted to give me the, the foundations for college and so forth. Don't give up. Because every year, over 1.2 million high schoolers drop out of high school in the United States alone. Let me repeat that, 1.2 million. That's a whopping uh, uh, one student every 25 seconds. That's 7,000 people a day. Let me repeat that, 7,000 high schoolers drop out today, will drop out at the end of the day. They give up. And folks, there's going to be a moment, you, you students or parents or teachers, there's going to be a moment that we want to quit. Especially students, come on, I'm going to get out of it. This is too much. It's too much work. It's too much pressure. I'm not the most popular kid in the school. Why should I be here? I feel that I don't. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because the alternative is not a good one. The alternative is not, is not a good one. About 25% of high school freshmen fail to graduate from high school on time. And by the way, for those that believe that dropping out of high school or dropping out of college is a good thing because Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg did it. Oh, you know what? I'm going to drop out. You know, these guys, they, they didn't go to college. They, 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 they drop out and now they're billionaires. So I'm going to do the same. So... For me to bring you back to reality a little bit, let me give you some numbers. And this is, and this is reality. High school dropouts will earn $200,000 less than a high school graduate in their lifetime. So there you go. There's your dreams of becoming a millionaire. And a high school dropout will earn $1 million less than a college graduate. So, yes, you're going to be a millionaire, but in the red. You're going to earn $1 million less if you drop out. So there, there's your dreams of becoming a millionaire if you drop out. No, absolutely not. Don't give up. In the United States, high school dropouts commit about 75% of crimes. Of course, you drop out, you have nothing to do because idle hands is the, is the shop of the enemy. You go to the street, you have nothing to do. So you start doing drugs, and in order to feed your drugs, you need to steal, do crime. 75% of crimes in the United States is a result of, uh, uh, is committed by high schoolers. I'm sorry, for, by drop, uh, high school uh, dropouts. So growing up in South America, I was in uh, elementary school, and there was one guy, his name was Alejandro. Alejandro Calles, I remember even his last name. And this guy he was the tallest guy in the class by, by far. Not because he was tall by nature, but because he had 
he had uh, failed two or three grades, two or three years. So he stayed in the classroom and everybody moved on and he stayed there. So he was tall and mean and he was a bully. He would hit his classmates. He will curse them. And he says, you know what? I don't like classes. I don't like homework. Why should I be here? Why am I here? I don't belong here. And one day somebody said, uh, you know, Alejandro, why don't you leave? I don't think it's a good advice that what he said, but that's what he said. Alejandro, why don't you leave? Leave the school. And he said, you know what? That's a great idea. And he left. He left. Uh, today, I said, it's very sad that he left. But at that moment, all of us were applauding. Oh, great. The guy who bullied everyone is gone. So the, the school ha gave a sigh of relief. Alejandro is gone. Soon he delved into the world of drugs. And a few years ago, a few years after that, I should say, one of my classmates saw him in the back of a bus, completely crazy, a madman. And he tried to uh, ask him, so what do you do? He said, no, I'm in the streets. I'm in the streets. I'm a homeless. I beg, for, I beg for bread. There you go. So much for. And Alejandro used to say, when he was in school, he used to say, I want to be free. Think about that. He said, I want to be free. Just let me be free. You know, here in the school, I have a schedule. I hate schedules. Here in the school, I have homework. I hate homework. Here in the school, I need to do PE. I love, I hate PE. Come on, give me freedom. I want to just be in the streets, do whatever I want. And he got what he wanted. He got the freedom. And the freedom is that he could roam in the street, do whatever he wants. But then in the streets, the enemy said, now you're mine. And he started doing drugs. And when he wanted to get out of drugs, he could not because now he was a slave of the enemy, a slave of drugs. Oh, tell me about freedom. When he was at school, he was completely free because he was able to get out. If he would not be free in the school, he could have not gotten out. But he was free. He thought he was not free. And now that he was in the streets, no food. He was begging for a piece of bread, and he was uh, trying to uh, get money for his, for his uh, drugs. Now he was completely enslaved by the drugs. Talk to me about freedom. And I can tell you about Alejandro Callejas. A few years after that, Alejandro was found in a street of Medellin, Colombia, dead, killed. That's where he was found, and that was the end of his life. But the rest, most of his classmates, one became a doctor, a, a physician, and another a scientist, and another a teacher. Beautiful. They moved on in life. But the one who wanted to be free, gone. Be careful. Don't give up. Stay on the course. Number four, don't just sit there. Go and do something that matters. In other words, as you go on your course in your life, as you go in the academy, as you go in your spiritual life, you're going to walk as you're going. You're going to find some of your classmates that have fallen on the side. Give him a hand and say, hey, we can do this together. How about if, come on, how about if we study together? How about if we pray together? How about if you play together a little bit. How about if we try to get up and do this together? Do something for someone. It's not only about you. Don't just sit there. Go and do something together. You see, going back to David, in 1 Samuel 17, 32, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant, that's David, your servant will go and fight the giant. In other words, David says, you guys are not willing to do anything. You guys are there sitting down. There's this giant. I'm willing to do something. And today the Lord is asking you, can you do something? Please do something for another person. Go on a mission trip. Say, tell someone that you appreciate him. Go and tell your teacher, thank you for your efforts. Go and do something that matters, that makes a difference. Care for someone. Pray for someone. Number five, don't settle for less. Go for the gold. Don't settle to just get C's or B's or just, do, just be a, 
lukewarm student. Ah, oh, I'm going to pass, and that's it. Just go for the gold. Do your best, and not only in grades, but in your personal life, in your growth. You try to be and do your best. My cousin, Mario. That cousin is, is, is not Mario Ferguson. Mario Ferguson is a good guy. My cousin didn't have a good head, but let me tell you about my cousin. My cousin, Mario Ortiz. Mario, uh, he bought a land in there in South America that was uh, with a, he had a mine of gold, a gold mine. So he was, he was mining and he was getting gold from there. And from time to time, we see him there in our city. One day I, I found him and I said, Mario, what's, what's going on? And he says, listen, I have a piece of land. I have a plot of land, such and such place. And we, we get gold. And he did. Uh, actually, he had just come and he had sold the gold. And he said, I'm doing very well. And I said, so how is that telling you? I was, I was a teenager that was like, wow, this is great. And he says, listen, I go there, but it's so dangerous. You know, there's gorilla, there is gorilla, there is bandits. There's people who want to steal the gold from you. So the, the thing is so, is so difficult that uh, at night, the workers come from different places of the mountain. They bring the gold to my log cabin. And uh, I put it there, and I close the doors, and I go to sleep. But I know that at night, the bandits will come to try to steal the gold. So I'd I, I sleep, literally, I sleep with a shotgun in my arms. And I said, Mario, are you serious? Yes, I sleep with a shotgun in my, in my arms. So I'm sleeping half asleep whenever I hear a little noise. And then he says, my log cabin is completely filled up with bullet holes. And I said, Mario, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? You're going to get killed. You know, Mario, it's better to have you poor but alive than rich and dead. Oh, Fernando, don't worry. Chill, chill. You know what? I have bodyguards. Everything is okay. Uh, just, just let me get a little bit more gold. Just like the pilot at the beginning of the story, let me just deviate a little bit. Let me just earn a little bit more gold, and I'll quit. The problem is that some people get into some situations that they say, let me just do it a little bit more, and then I'll quit. And when they want to quit, it may be too late. That was the case with Mario. One day when he had a big collection of gold and he was going to the city to sell it, bandits came and killed him. And in the funeral, my aunt, she, she cried on top of the, of the coffin. And she said, Mario, Mario, you just wanted a little bit more of gold. We wish we could have you here, all of you, without gold. And I'm... Asking, what are you chasing? What is the goal that are you chasing that perhaps is going to be your demise? Don't settle for less. Go for the goal that matters, not the goal that are going to bring your condemnation or your uh, perdition. Let me read to you. Matthew 6.20 says, But store up for yourself treasures in heaven. Where thieves do not break in, like in the case of Mario, those thieves do not break in and steal. Just store up in heaven. Or Psalm 16, 16, I'm sorry, Proverbs 16, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold? Now, I want you to get a good job. I want you to be successful. That's not the issue. The issue is when everything revolves around you, like Mario, and only you, this is all about me. That's where the problem is. If the Lord gives you resources, praise the Lord. But let's go and use it for the Lord and for the kingdom. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. And last point, call on God because he is on your side. Call on God. Actually, here in the school, don't go, this, don't go it alone. 
uh, ask for uh, uh, help from your teacher and from your parents and from your friends, from a tutor. Don't do this alone, but more than anything, call on God. Because you know what? God is for you. Sometimes we believe that God is that stern God looking up from heaven, is waiting for me to do something and slap my hand. Oh, I got you. I got you, Fernando. I got you. You did it again. That's what we think God is, but God is not. God is actually on your side, on my side. Students, he's on your side for you to be successful and grow and mature and become what he wants you to be. And he wants you to get good grace and he wants you to learn. He wants you. So call on him. Actually, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says that he has more than you could ever dream or think. Let me just read it to you. Now to him who is able, God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all, how much? All that we ask or imagine. So imagine something big, that's a piece of cake for God. Imagine something bigger, Psh, that's small. Imagine big things for God. So he says he's able to do that. So Call on God. Call upon the Lord. You're in trouble. Call upon the Lord. You need to go to a test. Come on. Call upon the Lord. You're a teacher. You have a huge class, and you feel that the class is just a little bit much to handle. Call on God. He said, Lord, this, these guys and girls are great, but it's kind of a big class. Come on. Give me some strength. Give me some wisdom on how to better. The Lord will give you the, the wisdom. So growing up... Uh, one day we bought, we came to the States, we bought a skateboard. It was the first skateboard I had in my life. We brought it back to South America and it was the only skateboard in the, in the, in the, in the barrio, in the neighborhood. So I, I invited my friends to go and try it and, 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 and ride the skateboard. With the difference that we had a neighbor an old lady who was just not very kind. And she hated kids and she hated the noise and she hated us going through her sidewalks and, and go on the skateboard and do noise and so forth. You see, in South America, for those of you who, who are from there, you know that most houses in the city, uh, from the house to the sidewalk, is just very close, like from here to this hallway here, just is very close. You can hear people passing. You can even hear what they're saying. If somebody's passing, like they pass and they say, oh man, the people who live here, you know, these people, I don't like them. You can hear everything. So this lady, she would come and she say, hey guys, don't ride your, I prohibit you from riding my, your skateboard on my sidewalk. And what happened is that her sidewalk was a little rugged. So. And we went on the on the skateboard. It made a lot of noise. So if she's asleep, is asleep. Let me tell her she will she will wake up. And uh, plus we scream. You know, kids, kids. So we said, you know, I'm sorry, you know, but we don't have a lot of sidewalk here. We we just, just need a lot of sidewalk, and we continue doing that. And uh, we saw that um, uh, she needed to do a little exercise. So I said, well, let's see what can we do for to help her to do a little exercise. So uh, one day we had the brilliant, not too brilliant, not too kind idea and go to the doorbell, Just doorbell, doorbell, and then uh, hit the button of the doorbell and run. Hit and run. And then so we, we went there, we hit uh, the doorbell, and then we ran. So she came, uh, probably she was uh, in her chair or something. She ran. Who, who is that? Who is there? Nobody. Okay, well, she went back. We came back and doorbell again. We run. Nobody. Okay, so uh, we said, listen, we're doing the, the, our excuse for doing something like that not very kind, is our excuse was, hey, we're uh, helping her to do exercise. You know, get up and go, get up and go, exercise. And so I was, this, get, this is getting a little boring. So we said, well, we, we want her to, you know, be awake and run a little faster. So getting a little boring. So we got, we went back when she had gone and probably she was sitting again. We got a bubble gum and then we pasted the bubble gum in the doorbell button. Now, 
Mind you that in South America, the doorbells, they ring not so kind and gentle like in the United States. Here, you know, ding dong. Not there. There is like an alarm because there's so much noise in the street that you need to know when somebody's arri you know, arriving. So you really put a big, you know, whenever you go to South America, you go to your friend. If you go there on a Sunday, don't go at six in the morning and ring the doorbell because it's going to wake up the whole family upstairs, downstairs. They're going to come and probably will kill you. It's just, just very loud. So uh, don't do that. But uh, then we put the, the bubble gum in the poor lady's doorbell, and then the big, the big uh, uh, sound started to sound. And then she came, "What's going on?" And of course, the the the, the sound will continue going. And you know what? It dawned on me after some time that that's what we do to God. We hit. We call on him, and then we run away. God, I have problems, but I don't want to talk to you. Uh, God, I'm flunking on some of the classes. Uh, you're supposed to do something, but I don't stay there to talk to God. Lord, uh, you're supposed to help me. So I, 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 I press the button of, of, Lord, you can help me. You should help me. But then I don't stay there wrestling with the word and say, Lord, where in the word? Can you please talk to me through your word? Can you help me solve the problem through your word? So it dawned on me that that naughty thing that we were doing to this poor lady is sometimes the same thing we do. We want God to help us, but we don't want to talk to him and sit down and kneel down and say, Lord, I'm not going to get up from here until you bless me. We're not willing to do our part. Well, well, Lord, give me good grace. That's it. That's it. That's the end of our discussion. Well, Lord, Lord, find me a good job, but that's the end of our discussion. And the Lord wants you to talk and pray and read and wrestle with the issue together with him. So I hope you're not like me. I hope you're not like those naughty guys at that time that it, they were doing hit and run, and in this case, spiritually. There's one text, Psalm chapter 50, 15, that says, And call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. Call on me on the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. And Psalm 56, 9 says that actually he's for us. God is not against us. It says, by his will, I know that God is for me. God is for me, not against me. He's for you. So, uh, so today, I want to challenge all of the students, faculty, parents, not to give up, not to be distracted. I want to challenge you to call on God and wrestle with him and get, uh, get him on your knees with the Bible in prayer. I want you to go for the gold, but not for the gold that perishes, but the gold that helps you to grow and to mature and to get ready for the rest of your life. And I finish with the story of Martin. Martin was a young fellow who uh, every, every year, his parents will take him to the grandparents' house and they will take a trip by train. They will take him, leave him there, and come back and pick him up afterwards. And one day when Martin was 11, 10 years old, he told the parents, you know what, I'm a grown-upper. How about if you let me go on the train by myself? I want to go on the train by myself. Well, after some discussion, I said, well, okay, I guess you know the route. You know where to get off. Let's do that. But before the parents left, da dad put a note on his son's pocket and said, open this in case you're in trouble, in case you feel alone, in case you feel threatened. Fine. He got into the train, said goodbye. A few minutes later, the train departed. And then after some time, he started feeling, felt, feeling threatened by some guys on the train. 
they were starting to make speak bad words and uh, uh, launching at him and, and telling him, well, looks like this guy is the rich kid. Let's see if we can get something from him and so forth and so on. He started to feel pretty uncomfortable to the point that he, he felt threatened. And at that moment, he remembered that he had a note on his pocket that says that his, daddy's, his dad says, open it if you feel threatened, you need something, open it. He said, well, I'm not feeling pretty, I'm not feeling pretty good here. He took the note out and the note said, son, I am in the last wagon in case you need me. He said, I'm out of here, wagon, I'm out of this wagon. He took his belongings, he went from wagon to wagon, and at the end, he was dad waiting for him. And he said, son, I'm here for you. And, and the son says, dad, I have never been so happy to see you in my life. <laughs> and then they were saved the rest of the trip, of course. And I'm here to tell you that God is on the wagon. God is not on the last wagon, but he's in the first, the freshman, and the sophomore, and the juniors, and the seniors. God is in each wagon, and he says, well, anytime you need, call on me. I'm going to be there for you because I'm here for you. I'm for you. I will never abandon you, and I'll never leave you. So today I want to say, high schoolers, this is, this is your thing. You, 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 can do, you can be extremely successful these next couple of years by the grace of God and show the school and your parents and your God that you can do this with his grace. May God bless you. May God bless the teachers. May you guys, all of us, have a wonderful school year by God's grace. At this time, we will be reading a litany of praise and dedication. I will be reading the leader portion uh, representing the administrative team. Mr. Stein Kraus, one of our Bible teachers, will be representing our faculty. Um, representing the student body will be our essay president, Nate Miller, and representing our parents and our friends, the Trajeco family. I invite you all to join us in this reading. The psalmist has said, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Today, we gather in this place to praise God for his unfailing mercy, his loving kindness, the work he has begun in us. We praise God for the gift of Christian education. We praise him for the opportunity to work, to learn, to grow together in the spirit of Christian fellowship. We praise him for the spiritual and intellectual challenges which deepen our faith and expand our understanding. We dedicate our talents, our schedule, our relationships, our lives to his service this year. We praise God for our children. We praise him for all that they are and for all that they will become. By his grace, we praise him for dedicated educators who with us work for the growth and success of our children in this life and for their eternal salvation. We praise him for the grace, the courage, the financial means, the health, and the strength by which he enables us to support Christian education. We dedicate our gifts, our time, our energy, whatever lies within our means to his service this year. We have confidence in God's leading in the plans for the year. May God grant the noblest of characters be developed that the highest standards of scholarship be maintained. May God grant that we think deeply, live fully, self-unselfishly, and honor God completely. 
We praise God for our students. May we always see each one of them as an individual made in the image of God, incapable of all things through him who strengthens us. May we guide them to an ever-deepening realization of Christ's love in their own lives, to greater academic excellence, and to increased personal maturity. We praise God for our parents, our teachers, our friends, for all those who enrich our lives with their love, their support, and their leadership. We recognize that it is through their personal commitment and sacrifice that the foundation for our success has been laid. We pledge to honor their commitment to us by reflecting the love we have received to those around us, by utilizing our God-given gifts and increased understanding to make the world around us a better place and to live lives of integrity, courage, and conscience. Realizing that by beholding, we become changed. We ask God's Spirit to direct our minds and the minds of our children to discern the much less charms of our Savior. As we know Him better, we desire to show Him better. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His surpassing greatness. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Ask you to please stand with me for the ded- for the prayer for dedication. Let's bow our heads. Our dear Heavenly Father, today we are truly blessed. Today we are blessed to be standing here at Andrews Academy. We're blessed to be able to walk these hallways, to be educated, to be taught, to be led spiritually by the faculty and staff that are here. We are blessed for the parents and the families that are here to support our students. We are blessed for the community, for Andrews University. We're blessed for all the prayers across the whole world. Today, as we dedicate Andrews Academy, as we dedicate the 22-23 school year, as we dedicate every staff and faculty and child and student that walks through, through, through these hallways, as we dedicate any family member that is here supporting them, we ask you to continue to be with everyone in, in a very close way. As we know today, we're living in times that are some of the worst times we've seen. And Lord, Dr. Ortiz, Pastor Ortiz reminded us today of six things. And as we pray through this year, we ask for us to stay on the course. We ask for you to help us with our distractions. We ask you to give us a strength to not feel underestimated, whether we're the students or whether the staff or faculty to know that you have set a high bar for us and that this generation especially, we hope and pray will finish the work that we have here on this earth. We ask you, Lord, to help us not give up in any capacity that we're here today. We ask you to strengthen us. We ask you to continue to help us show your love to everyone around us, for us to take the intentionality of doing something for someone else. And Lord, we ask to serve you in all, as Pastor Ortiz mentioned, to go for the gold, the gold that matters, not the earthly gold, but the heavenly gold. And as we finish today this dedication prayer, Lord, we call on you and may we, may we and you and everyone that is here remember that you are just a phone call, a prayer, a letter. You are right there at any time. So Lord, we dedicate the faculty, the staff, the parents, the students, the community, and even those that are outside of these walls, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity and we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated.
faculty can remain here. If you're any student, you can go ahead. Students and community people can go back to your seats. Um, the faculty will remain on the stage, please. At this time, we have a special presentation for each of you. We'd like to invite Pastor Glassford to join us on the stage here. Pastor Glassford has, has allowed us to read a bio on behalf of him. So please just bear with me as I read his bio. And we will begin. Pastor Glassford's earliest childhood memories are of playing outdoors in a logging camp in Glide, Oregon, attending Gladstone camp meeting near Portland, Oregon. It was at Gladstone that he first felt God's claim on his life. When one of his mother's high school classmates, who was a pastor, looked straight at him and he, as he sat behind his sleeping little brother in a baby buggy and said, he will be a pastor when he grows up. His father, Roland, and his mother, Sarah Jean, were graduates at Laurelwood Academy, which is located west of Portland, Oregon. They made sure that Alvin, his oldest sister, Janice, and his younger brother, Dwayne, attended Roseburg Junior Academy. Joining the local Pathfinder Club brought the influence of other committed Adventist adults into his life. Baptized while in the fourth grade, it was his seventh and eighth grade Bible teacher, Mr. Edward Starkbyam, that taught him about righteousness that is ours by faith in what Jesus accomplished for us. He learned that Jesus' perfect baptism stood in place of his own less than perfect baptism. Pastor Glassford graduated from Milo Adventist Academy in, should I say the year? <laughs> in 1981. <Yep. laughs> and received a large suitcase as a graduation gift from his parents. Hint, hint. Yep. Taking the hint, he only ever returned home again during summer breaks to work as a lumberjack. While fell, felling timber and working around all the heavy logging equipment paid extremely well, it also contributed to his hearing loss in spite of all the safety precautions that were taken. Ironically, it was logging that paid for Pastor Glassford to go to college and study theology. He attended Southwestern Adventist University, Andrews University, and finally graduated from Newbold College in Great Britain with a bachelor's in theology. Pastor Glassford was deeply impressed by spirituality and dedication of his teachers and college professors. Yes, Christian education was then and is now expensive. However, it was abundantly clear to him that none of the faculty or college administrators were getting rich, especially at Newbold. It was humbling to witness the financial hardships of faculty, some with degrees from Europe's most prestigious universities, making sacrifices so they could be the professors in a Seventh-day Adventist college. Arriving back in the United States, Pastor Glassford was sponsored to attend Andrews University Seminary. Now I have the chair of the seminary department here, but this is not personal. <laughs> Um, back then, the joke was a seminary was a cemetery. <laughs> Probably still, right? Yeah, the joke. But it was here on this campus of Andrews University that the rigorous European style education received at Newbold College started to pay off. Not only were the professors absolutely world class, but they obviously enjoyed teaching and he loved academic challenges that getting a Masters of Divinity demanded. It was a seminary that he first thought that maybe it was teaching um, that was the center of God's call in his life. 
Pastor Glassford and his wife, Barbara Hill, were married during the very end of the seminary studies. There's only one thing harder than being a minister. This is Pastor Glassford's words, and that is Mary to one. So Barbara, thank you for standing next to him. God has planned this team long ago, and to him goes all the praise. Their two adult sons, Sean and Shane, are also here with them here today. Pastor Glassford has 35 years of service to this church, and of those 35, 22 of them have been here at Andrews Academy. Amen. So Pastor Glassford, I'd like to just take a moment to say, I'm going to do this in three ways. If there's any faculty or administrators that are in the audience that have worked with Pastor Glassford, can you please can stand up. Okay. Not any here yet behind us, but any that have worked with them before, to see if there's any, okay. Any students that have taken a class from Pastor Glassford, whether you're a student or a parent now, please stand up. Okay. Amen. Amen. So Pastor Glassford, thank you. Please be seated. You have 22 years of generations that you have affected and you have led spiritually here as a leader. And we thank you for that. Now, this time I'm going to call Principal Ferguson as he has some other words to share on behalf of the faculty. I'm going to repeat these phrases, Pastor Glossford. You'll never be forgotten. You have taught future doctors and lawyers and firefighters and mechanics and carpenters. You have made a big impact. You open minds. You will never know your true influence. You perform magic in the classroom. You change hearts. Pastor Glossford, I stand here as principal of the academy because of the relationship that I've had with you. When I came as a contract teacher, you welcomed me with open arms. When you relinquish the duties of sponsor for Bible camp, you still came and supported. When I started my first year as principal, and it was during the height of COVID, and there were difficult decisions that had to be made, and, and we were going back and forth in our faculty meeting, and he put his hand up and he said, I want for us to make a decision to follow whatever Pastor Ferguson says as the principal of the school. And that determined the trajectory of my leadership Pastor Glossford, you are a man of God. You have served well. And you're not going to stop serving simply because you're not in this place. You will continue to serve because it's a part of your DNA. God has called you to serve as a pastor, as a teacher, and as a friend. And I want to read this little plaque that just kind of summarize all the things that we want to say as faculty and staff. And so I'm going to read this. And I made sure it was real wood because of the lumberjack thing, right? <laughs> so it says here, presented to Pastor Alvin Glossford for your hard work and dedication to, the, to SDA Christian education. Thank you for blessing our school with your humble leadership heartfelt ministry, and a deep love for the Lord. Thank you for the difference you have made in the lives of so many as pastor, teacher, and friend. Andrews Academy, Principal Ferguson, August 27, 2020. And then it finally says here, may his peace be with you. Pastor Gloss, we want to pray over you before you walk out of these doors. We want for you to take the name of Jesus with you. There's a song that says, um, God will take care of you. And we believe that he has done that thus far and that he'll continue to do so. 
If you could just stand with me as we pray over Pastor Glossford. Never, never give a minister a microphone. <laughs> but I want to thank um, God's providence for bringing my family and I here to Andrews Academy. It was a recess from being a pastor, and it was a privilege to raise my children in this community. And I want to thank my wife, who has supported me financially in this mission field of Christian education. Um, and of all the schools in North America that I am aware of, I believe this school, in this chapel, you stand at the very heart of one of the finest high schools in Adventism. And it's not just because of the teachers here on this stage. It's because of the students in the pew and the parents that have brought you here. And I have no doubt that what God's blessing is going to continue to be poured out on this school as we reach for the prize of heaven. Let us pray. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And God, for each person in this room, from the youngest to the oldest, God, you created a purpose for them. And then you created them to walk in their purpose. God, you have been with Pastor Glossford from when he was a small child until this point. God, you guided him and you pointed him in the right direction. And he was obedient to everything that you asked him to do. And God, despite of, or regardless of what challenges he has faced in his life, he has remained faithful. God, I'm so grateful that he has served this academy well. He has served his community well. He has served the church well. And now, God, as he moves to the next phase of life, we pray, oh God, that you will keep him healthy, that you will keep him in his right mind, that you will bless his family in a very special way. God, we're grateful for the time that you've given to us so that we can spend it with Pastor Glossford. And as we all prepare for the kingdom, I pray, oh God, that right now, even with his hearing deficit, that at that day, he will be able to hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful. Amen. Be with us now, God. We love you and we honor you. Let all of God's people say, amen. amen. Our hymnals in 669, six, the Lord bless you and keep you. Those of you who have sung in choirs before and know the voices, please, uh, let's do so. The Lord bless you and keep you.
bow our heads for the benediction and grace. Dear God, we are thankful for the time we have spent today in your presence in fellowshipping one with another. And as we transition from this service, we ask you to be with each individual, bless them through this week. Please bless our meal that we will share together, help it to be nourishing to our bodies. Bless those who took the time to prepare and to serve it. Now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. There is the meal provided for you in the commons. <laughs>